Turn with me, please, to uh, Matthew 6, and then I'll read two other verses before I get there, and uh, we'll, this will be efficient. You're going to Matthew 6, but please put on the screen for us, guys in the back, uh, Philippians 4, 6, and then we'll read 1 Peter 5, 7. These have been our text for some uh, weeks when I've been with you on Friday. Um, we, we taught a series, I don't know if you remember that far back, but there's been a number of things happened since then, but uh, called No Worries. Yes. No worries. Yes. And in checking my heart, I felt like I wasn't quite done with that. There's at least another one that we need to look do on it. So that's what we're looking at tonight. And if you haven't been with us in previous sessions, I think we have at least seven other sessions of this. They're available online. It won't cost you anything. If you need want a hard copy, you can go. If you're in the building, you can go by the Word Supply and uh, those that were with, with us previously, do you think it'd be worth their while? Yes. Listen to it, watch it, get, get in on it. Yes. I believe it would. Um, sure, uh, help you a lot more than watching a lot of stuff that's on TV. <laughs> I'm pretty sure of that. Uh, Philippians 4, 6 says, be careful for nothing. I believe it's the Amplified that says, don't, don't fret or have any anxiety about anything. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Did the Lord tell us to, to not be anxious or worried about anything? Yes. In 1 Peter 5, he says it like this, 1 Peter 5, 7, he says, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Now the word care is not like the idea of caring about somebody. If you look it up, the word means anxiety, anxious care, what we'd call worry. Don't be anxious about anything, the scripture told us. Then cast all your anxiety and worry on him. Amen. Now this is the same word cast that's used when they cast their garments on the donkey for him to ride. <laughs> uh, cast. So if you took a coat off and threw it on the donkey, that coat's not on you anymore. Right? The donkey's got it. It's on the donkey. It's on the load carrier. It's on the burden bearer. <laughs> yeah. And that's what the Lord told us to do. You take your anxieties, everything that's bothering you, causing you to be anxious and fearful and worried, and grab it like a cloak or coat on you, and you throw it on him. If you realize later that you let it get back on you, grab it again and throw it on him. This is not something he does for you. This is not something anyone else can do for you. If you don't do this, it won't get done. You must cast or throw it off. Him telling us to means we can. Right? Come on, say it out loud. I can, I can. cast all my care, all my care. Every, anxiety. every anxiety, every fear and worry, every fear and worry. Over, on him. over on Him. And what you're doing is by faith, you're giving it to somebody that can do something about it. But if you're still worrying about it, He doesn't have it. You got it and you can't fix it. And the one that can fix it doesn't have it. It's a problem. <laughs> we're, we're commanded to do something about this worry thing. We are to cast or throw it on him. So it can be done. And as in this whole, in this series, that's what we've been looking at, is how to do it. In uh, Matthew, the sixth chapter, 
Matthew 6, there's a, so much here. We, the, I believe the first parts of this series, we spent a, quite a bit of time in this sixth chapter of Matthew. But uh, in verse 25, Matthew 6, 25, I want us to look at kind of the, uh, the Jesus summation of this. In uh, Matthew 6, 25, he said, therefore I say to you, take no thought. And, and many other translations will say anxious thought. Take no anxious thought for your life. What you shall eat, what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on. Now it doesn't mean you can't think about what kind of groceries we might need for next week. You can think about it, but he's commanding you not to worry about it. And it's not the same thing. And you can tell when you've crossed the line. How can we tell? Well, it was on session number three or something that we, we covered that. But, <laughs> but I'll go over it again real quick. Uh, worry is fear. And so whether it's a mild dread or a full-blown panic, it's the same evil stuff, just different degrees of fear. And you can identify fear by vexation. The scripture says fear has torment. And when it's chewing on you, and bothering you, you're not just thinking about it anymore, you're worrying about it. You're yielding to fear. And according to Jesus, you need to stop it immediately, especially if you want to expect to have any change in your life. If you want to get him involved, you got to stop it and begin to get in faith. Now, I didn't say it was just always the easiest thing to do, especially if you've been practicing worrying for 50 years and are very accomplished at it, then you have dug a worry rut that you slide into when anything comes. It's going to take some mind renewal. And so you need to get this serious. It won't cost you anything. And listen to it about 53 times. <laughs> now we're laughing, but I'm telling you, if you've got something ingrained in you for decades and your grandmother was a champion worrier and your mother was a champion worrier and you're a champion worrier, it takes something to break that. And you got to starve your fears and feed your faith. Amen. Feed it. Amen. Feed your faith. What do you feed your faith? Not hamburgers and hot dogs. You feed it the anointed word of God. Amen. And you need to feed, if you're deficient in an area, you need to be fed in that area, yeah. in that specific area. So he said, take no thought for your life, what you'll eat, what you'll drink, for your body, what you'll put on is not the life more than food and the body more than clothes. He says, look at the fowls of the air. They don't sow, they don't reap, they don't gather in the barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. He takes care of birds. Are you not much better than they? Say it out loud. He takes care of the birds. He takes care of the birds. And he takes care of me too. Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit to his stature? Worry never paid a bill, never healed a body part, never helped or fixed anything. It only makes it worse. So why keep doing it? And yet millions just keep right on doing it. And we've all done way too much of it. But let's stop it. Let's obey the Lord. Let's make a change. Let's start acting like faith people yes. instead of unsaved people. He said, why take thought for clothes? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. Yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, 
which today is, now I want you to notice this phrase, today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven. Now he's going to talk about this more in just a moment. He's talking about today and tomorrow. Yes. Today is, and tomorrow it's cast into the oven. Let me just stop right here. Why would you worry about something a bunch today that you know is not even going to be here tomorrow? Hmm? Now these are Jesus' words. If God clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? The more you worry, the less faith you have. The more faith you have, the less you worry. It's just a fact. Keep going, verse 31. Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? What shall we drink? Wherewithal shall we be clothed? Do you hear the tenor and the spirit of unbelief and anxiety? What are we going to do? Where are we going to get? $3,000 by next week. Yeah. Where in the world? What are we going to do? The Lord said, don't say that. Right. Don't say that. If the Lord says, don't say something, what should you do? Don't say it. Don't say, it. <laughs> don't say what? Where are we going to get it? How are we, how are we going to come out of this? What in the world are we going to do? Because you are just parroting at that point what the devil brought to your mind. He brought that to your mind. What are you going to do? 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 And if you don't combat that, it won't be long until you'll open your mouth and you know what you'll say? What are we going to do? And at that point, you are being faithless. You're giving God nothing to work with. And, and, and people do this, and we've all done some of it, I'm sure, at different times in our life. Uh, they get down in the floor and beg God, what are we going to do for four hours? And cry and call it prayer. And it's not prayer. It's nothing God can work with. It's ignoring what he told us to do and trying to make things work our own way. We must take him seriously, saints. If we want results, we've got to stop this worry and this fear. And don't say you can't help it because that's another lie. Guess who told you that? <laughs> I want you to say it out loud. My mind, my mind is, my mind. is my, mind. my mind. I can think on, I can think on what, I on. what I choose to think on. I can speak, I can speak. Listen, to, listen to, look at, look at what, I to. what I choose to look at. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. you don't have to. I don't have to meditate on the problem night and day. We've been commanded uh, the Lord told Joshua uh, to meditate on the Word you, night and day yes. and, and uh, keep it in your mouth. And then, as you observe to do it, you'd make your way prosperous yes. and you'd have good success. Yes. This is our part of getting the problem fixed. Yes. It's controlling our own minds and controlling our own mouths. Yes. Disciplining ourselves about what we let ourselves listen to and talk about and watch. God's not going to do that for us. That's our job. He told us to do that. But if you'll do it, He'll help you. The anointing will come. The peace will come. Hallelujah. The provision will come. Praise God. Whatever it is you need to get out of the situation. He said, take no thought, saying... What shall we eat? What shall we drink? Wherewithal shall we be clothed? What, what are you going to say if you don't say that? 
If the kids are hungry and there are no groceries and there are no money, what are you going to say? Let me stop back up. What will you be tempted to say? <laughs> what are we going to eat? What did the Lord tell you? Don't say it. Don't take that thought. Well, what are you going to do instead? You should quote the word. You should say. Hmm? Like, like the psalmist said, uh, I, I've been young, now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Huh? My God shall supply all my need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. He feeds the birds. <laughs> he feeds me and my kids. We will eat good. We'll wear good. We'll live good our whole life. Now you start talking like that, no matter how you feel, even through your tears, if you'll talk like that, you're giving him something to work with. You're opening the door. You're giving him access into the situation. You're trusting him. You're believing him. You're obeying him. You're doing what he told you to do. Do you think you could count on him if you're doing what he told you to do? to come through for you. You can count on him. Every time. Every time. He said, uh, verse 32, For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things. Now some people have tried to be act super spiritual and say, well, you know, we may not really need it. No, the Bible said he knows you need it. <laughs> Okay, so quit acting goofy. You need something to eat. You need something to wear. You need a place to live. And the Lord knows you need it. Hmm? And he's already got a plan. Before you ever found out you needed it, he has a provision for it. But he needs some cooperation out of you. He requires some faith. Verse 33. But seek ye first... Uh, not your groceries, not your rent, right. Right? right? Not your children's stuff, right. not their sporting stuff, right. not your hobbies, right. not your recreation. Right. There's only number one, one, number one spot. Yeah. Seek ye first. What? The kingdom of God. Many, 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 many church going people are not doing this. Yeah. They're not doing this. There's 25 other things come before the kingdom of God in their life. And so they're violating the first principle of prosperity, which is why things take so long and they're not happening. One reason I can say that is because the Lord told me that's what I was doing. <laughs> Thank God it's about three decades ago. I've made some changes, but he... He, he, when Phyllis and I were struggling so much in our finances in the beginning days of our ministry, and the Lord took me to this verse. Yeah. And he said, Keith, you, like many of my people, you know this, yeah. but you're not doing it. You're not practicing it. Yeah. And uh, thank the Lord yeah. for the next several years, he taught us. Yeah. And we're able to make some changes. Yeah. Praise, God. Yeah. Praise God. And we got free, yeah. got in good shape, better shape, and been coming up ever since. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Yes, thank you, Lord. But what is God's first principle of prosperity here? You can't put yourself first. You can't put your kids first. You can't put your business first or your hobbies. You've got to put His kingdom first. Then if you'll do that, all these things. He was talking about natural things. What you eat, what you wear. All these things shall be added to you. Do you believe that? Do you believe what Jesus said. You take care of his things, he'll take care of your things. You put his things first, he will see to it that those things we're talking about will, are added to you. Now keep going, this next verse, the last verse of the chapter here. Take therefore no thought for the morrow. 
No anxious, worried thought about tomorrow. For tomorrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Now, uh, this is where I wanted to, to get to. So basically, we've just read the text now. Um, what does this mean? Take no thought, no anxious thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Let me read this to you from some other good translations and listen to it. In uh, the Amplified, verse 34, he said, So do not worry or be anxious about tomorrow. Let me just stop right there. Don't raise your hand, but have you ever done that? Have you ever been anxious about tomorrow? Did the Lord say don't do it? Should we take him seriously? He said don't worry or be anxious about tomorrow. And then he begins to tell you why it's foolish and unreasonable to do so. For tomorrow will have worries and anxieties of its own that you don't even know about, that you haven't gotten to yet. If you're trying to bite off the worries of tomorrow, today, you're being very foolish because you don't know what's happening tomorrow. You may think you do, but you'll find out you didn't. Sufficient for each day is its own trouble. Let me read this to you from the New Century Version. The New Century says, so don't worry about tomorrow. Because tomorrow will have its own worries. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Listen to the uh, Good News translation. Good News translation says, So do not worry about tomorrow. It will have enough worries of its own. There is no need to add to the troubles each day brings. Worrying about tomorrow is trying to add tomorrow's issues to today. It's a foolish thing. And one of, the, one of the reasons it is so foolish is because you are not graced to deal with tomorrow's problems today. You're not graced to deal with it, which is why It is so wearing. Worrying about tomorrow will wear you out. And here is, here's the trick of the enemy. Worrying about tomorrow is using up today's resources, not on today's problems. trying to use today's resources to fix something that may or may not happen, you don't even know. It's a foolish thing to do. It shows a serious lack of understanding. Now you've done it and I've done it, but it's dumb. Let's get enlightened. Does Jesus know what he's talking about? When he says, don't, don't take any worried or anxious thought about tomorrow because tomorrow will have its own issues. Hmm? What's, what's the Lord saying? Don't borrow on tomorrow's problems. Deal with today. Be victorious today. Hmm? Because you're not graced to live in tomorrow today. You're only graced for today. Yes. Good word. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, 
Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Listen to the message. Now, a lot of times the message is not my favorite because they get a little loose sometimes, but uh, I think they got this kind of right on this one. It says, uh, give your entire attention to what God's doing right now and don't get worked up about what may or may not happen tomorrow. Hmm? God will help you deal with whatever hard things come up when the time comes. Hmm? Will it be there tomorrow? And if you need to deal with something tomorrow, he will grace you to deal with it when it comes up. You're not graced to deal with tomorrow today. You're only de- graced to deal with today. Do you remember the Bible talks about now is the accepted time, right? Today is the day of salvation. You can't live in yesterday. You can't. And no amount of regret will change yesterday. It can mess up today. Regret can mess up today, but it cannot change yesterday. You can't live in tomorrow. Because when tomorrow gets here, it's today. You have never lived in any other day than today. Right? And you cannot change tomorrow by worrying about tomorrow. You cannot. No one has ever changed tomorrow by worrying about it. But you can mess up today by worrying about tomorrow. When you could have been having fun, could have been enjoying the day, right? Could have been. Someone said, what if something big happens, you know, next week? Well, we'll deal with it. God will be there. But why mess up today? We're having a good day. No big problems going on right now. Let's party. Let's enjoy it, right? (laughs) Now you're laughing, but there are many, 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 even good church going people. They are they're just not enjoying life. Not enjoying life at all. There's so many good things they could be thankful for, could be enjoying, but in the midst of their kids being around, of having plenty, of having some health, won't even enjoy it, worried about what they heard might happen next week or next month, and are all sour. And, and lost their joy and lost their peace. Could be playing with their babies, yeah. having a good time. Yeah. Could be having a picnic with their spouse. huh? Yeah. Could be blowing the leaves off the road on their motorbike. Could be, huh? Yeah. Could be grilling a steak on the grill. I said, could yeah. be praising the Lord, yeah. having a hallelujah singing time. Could, yeah. could be enjoying some things. Right? But this thing about worrying about tomorrow, it can absolutely ruin today and do nothing to help tomorrow. Nothing. Besides all that, the head of the church, Jesus, commanded us not to do it. Are we going to take him seriously or not? All right. Go with me, please, to, uh, you're, you're there in, in uh, Matthew 6. Back up a little bit, just in the same chapter, to what we call the Lord's Prayer. Actually, it's Him teaching us how to pray. Matthew six eleven. What does it say? Give us today bread for the rest of our life. <laughs> Somebody said, I'd like that. I'd like that. <laughs> yeah, I know you would. And it requires no faith. And you know what pleases him? Faith. Give us when? This day. Our daily bread. Listen to Luke, you know, Luke's account of this same thing. Luke eleven three. Luke eleven three said, Give us what? Day by day. So even more specific. 
give us day by day our daily bread. Not enough bread to last me the rest of my life today that I can store. Hmm? You can't prepare for any uh, eventuality in the future. The vast majority of it you have no idea about. You don't know. Right? And if you, you, you remember the guy that said, soul, you've got much goods laid up for many years. Man, you're set. God said, you fool. <laughs> fool. Sound like Mr. T, don't you? <laughs> fool? You, <laughs> you leaving here tonight. Yeah. And all this stuff you've saved up, who's going to eat it? Who's going to enjoy it? No, you got, you got to watch about these things because what they are is fear. Yes. Right. Yes. And if you're walking by fear, you're not walking by faith. And if you're not walking by faith, you're not pleasing the Lord. We need to listen to him. We need to do what he shows us to do. But you can't prepare for any and everything for tomorrow. And the good news is God's going to be there. Tomorrow, did I, did I upset somebody? Oh, hold on. God, is God going to be there tomorrow? Is he leaving? Is he going somewhere? He said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. He'll never leave us. He'll never forsake us. And so, whatever we need tomorrow, if there's a tomorrow on the earth, if there's a tomorrow for me, huh? I mean, if you get so upset about where you think the politics of the country will be in 25 years, but you've been in heaven for 10 years before that happens, what did you do? All you did was mess up your time down here, right? Griping and fussing and judging and fearing and worrying. People do it under the guise of being intelligent and having foresight and, and being a thinker. And no, it's being a doubter. It's being an unbeliever. It's being one that yields to fear and anxiety. Faith helps you to rest. We which have believed do enter into rest. And you just relax and you, you can relax because I'm going to be around forever. The Lord told me so. Not down here, but I don't want to stay down here forever. I'm going to be around forever. Right? And if some of the, the natural stuff down here didn't go exactly right, well, my good stuff's in heaven anyway. Right? My permanent. So this is all temporary. 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 And no matter what happens tomorrow, my Father will be there. He'll be right there. Amen. Nothing will surprise him. Nothing will shock him. Nothing will take him and catch him off guard. Never has. Never will. All I got to do is trust him and walk with him and hold on to his hand real tight and, and follow real close. And whatever it takes, I'll be okay. I'll be more than okay. Now, when you start talking about this, sometimes people get their feathers ruffled because they want to worry about tomorrow. It's a lot of what they do every day. But did the head of the church, I'm going to go over it again real slow. Did the head of the church command, he didn't say try this or try not to. Did he tell us, don't take any anxious thought about tomorrow. Don't you be in any fear about it, about tomorrow. You know, in Matthew 24 and other places where he talks about, you know, in the last days there'll be earthquakes and famines and wars and rumors of wars. A lot of folks miss the very next verse. He said, but don't let your heart be troubled. Yeah. What? 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 <laughs> don't let it bother you. Don't let your heart be be upset and fearful and troubled. Why? Because God's with you. He's got you. And for it all gets too bad, he's taking us all out of here. Hmm? 
Well, that's not what I believe, somebody said. Well, we'll find out, won't we? <laughs> but, but in the meantime, don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm quoting Jesus. Yeah. Listen to what Corey Ten Boom said about this verse. Corey Ten Boom. She said, worrying is carrying tomorrow's load with today's strength. It's carrying two days at once. It's moving in tomorrow ahead of time. Worrying doesn't empty tomorrow of its sorrow. It empties today of its strength. And I would say this, it, em it doesn't empty tomorrow of its sorrow. It empties today of its joy and strength, I would add. Because your joy is your strength. It's real simple to, te to tell how well you're doing in your faith walk. Hmm? You can judge it by your joy and your peace. If you have no joy and no peace, you are not doing well at all spiritually. You're not doing well in, in, in your level of faith. You, your little faith or no faith. The more faith you have, the more joy you have. The stronger you are in your spirit. And the joy of the Lord is your strength. The more faith you have, the more peace you have. The peace that passes understanding. Hmm? This, is not, this is not so mystical. Right? What if you're depressed and scared and upset? You're not doing well. You, you spiritually, you're not healthy. You're not doing well at all. You've been feeding on poisonous junk. You've been watching the wrong thing. You've been listening to the wrong thing. You've been talking to the wrong thing, talking about the wrong thing, and not feeding on the right thing. Hmm? If you're listening to something, and after just a few minutes or an hour, you can tell it's putting fear in you. And you've lost your joy since you started watching it. And you've lost your peace. What do you need to do? Get it off. You, you need to quit watching it. Don't let it pull the joy and peace out of you. It's letting the in, giving the enemy access. But if you hear something, some good teaching, some good preaching, some good singing, read some good scriptures in the Bible, and it gives you some peace. Huh? And you hear and you watch it and it gives you some joy. What do you do? Get some more of that. Is that right? I mean, this is not confusing. Get some more of that. Get some more of that. Listen to it again. Listen to it again. Watch it again. Talk about it again. And if it's the right thing, your joy will get stronger. And your peace will get stronger. And if you're smart, you'll just feed on that. You'll just keep on feeding on that. You can't overdose on it. It helps you. Oh, somebody say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We're told that we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Look in James 4. Let's remind ourselves of it. James 4. And verse 13, James 4, 13, he says, Go to now you that say today or tomorrow. See, so you're talking about tomorrow. We're going to go to a city. We're going to stay there a year. We're going to buy. We're going to sell. We're going to get money. Verse 14, whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow. I want you to say that out loud. You don't know, you don't know. What's, happening what's happening tomorrow. Is that true or not? Yes. No matter what you think you know, you don't know. Right. Have a lot of people imagined a lot of things would happen that didn't happen. Yes. You don't know. I don't know what's going to be on the morrow. For what is your life? One, one of the most foolish things that human beings do is live down here like they're going to live here forever. 
People are like shocked when somebody dies. People are just shocked. That's so foolish. We're told 155,000 people died today somewhere on the planet. This is a regular thing. Right? Every, every second almost, two, leave here. How many people still around from the 1600s? Not a one. Right? Not a one. The Lord tarries his coming in a few years. None of us will still be on the planet. And yet, people act like they're going to get up, they're going to go to their job, their school, they're going to cut the grass, they're going to wash the clothes, they're going to make the bed, we're going to do this forever. Do you have enough understanding to know you're not going to do this forever? You're not going to do this for another 200 years. Most people are not going to do it for another 100 years because of their age. So, what's happening now and tomorrow and next year in the next 10, 20, 30, 40, whatever, 50, 75 years, whatever if you're young, it is very, very temporary. Yes. Yes, sir. Everything you're doing is just a season. Yes. Yes. Right? Yes. Yes. Your kids are born, they're young, they grow up, they leave. They're supposed to leave. <laughs> the grandkids are born, grow up, develop, they're supposed to have their own lives. Everything you're doing. So, and you see people that just get, get all messed up and go, yeah, but I, I don't want them to grow up. You, you want them to be abnormal? <laughs> That's right. I, mean, I, I don't want them to leave. You, you want them to have a bad life, not have the kind of life they should have. No, everything we're doing is but for a brief season, just a season. So you got to watch about these long range plans that you didn't hear from God about. You just made up some stuff and you got these long range. That's what he's talking about. We're going to do this. We're going to do this for a year. And, and what he's saying is, you know, you didn't check in with me. You didn't ask me about any of this. And you don't have a clue what's happening from now through the rest of the year. Keep reading. He said, uh, your life is a vapor. It appears for a little while and then vanishes away. Uh, you ought to say, if the Lord will, we'll live and do this or that. But if you rejoice in these boastings, you rejoicing is evil. To him that knows to do good and does it not, to him it's sin. We know very, very little about the future. And there are, though, two sources that will try to feed you information about the future. One is the enemy. Hmm? He will try to feed you uh, a picture of the future. And it's not nice. This future the enemy has for you. Do you know the devil has a plan for your life? Hmm? Hmm? He has a plan for your life. And you know what it involves? Death and destruction. <laughs> Death and destruction. And the good news is, you've already missed his perfect will for your life because you got born again. You got saved. His perfect will for your life was to die lost and, and be with him in, in judgment. Uh, and you missed that. You just missed that. You missed the perfect will of the devil. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, now we need to see about missing the rest of his will. Let's just miss his plan entirely. Huh? Because he does seek to, to work, wreak havoc in your life and destruction. He is a killer. He's a murderer. He's a destroyer. He actually uh, gets pleasure out of death and destruction. Yes. It pleased him well to wipe out the whole planet. I mean, that's, he's tried to do it multiple times. 
He's come close a few times. Going all the way, all the way back to Noah's time and, and different times. I mean, the earth, sometimes people think, well, boy, the, the, things are really getting bad. They're actually not as bad as they have been yeah. in times past. Yeah. In Noah's time, uh, it was violence everywhere. So bad, it was intolerable to God. Uh, Sodom and Gomorrah was an awful place yeah. and a bad place. We hadn't got there yet. The enemy is trying to get us there again. He's always trying to get the next generation, trying to get you further down the road so he can steal, kill, and destroy. And he wants to plant seeds in your and my mind of things going worse and worse for us. Of things just getting, you know, uh, worse and worse so that we turn and look back to the past and go, why can't it be? Like it used to be. Which is another thing the Lord told you, don't say. <laughs> go, to, go to Ecclesiastes. <laughs> Ecclesiastes 7.10. What does it say? What's the first two words? Say not. What does that mean? Don't say this. When the Bible says, don't say this. What do you reckon most people are going to be doing? They're going to be saying that. He said, don't you say, what's the cause? What's the reason that the former days were better than these? Oh, the good old days. Good old days. <laughs> You know, way back in the way back, way back, way back when it was, it was idyllic. It was great. It was just great. Oh, you should have been there. It was, it was great. Yeah. And you got a foggy selective memory. Because <laughs> there was some problems back there that you are conveniently leaving out. <laughs> Do you remember? The first generation of Israelites that got delivered out of Egypt wasn't too long until they said, oh, back in Egypt. Yeah. Huh, you remember that? We had garlic and onions. We had watermelon. Ooh, I wish I had some watermelon. Oh, so we had it so good. We had it. You were a person's property. You lived in a terrible shack with rags on your back. God has delivered you. You're free. You got money. You're just a few miles away from the promised land. What is wrong with you? <laughs> now you're laughing. But people are doing this all the time. Oh, you know, back in the good old days, back in the good old days, well, you do that and you're stuck. You're stuck. The truth is, the path of the just is like the shining light. It don't get darker and darker. It gets brighter and brighter to the full day's sun. Our best days are not behind us. Our best days, somebody, somebody say, my best days are not behind me. They're in front of me. Hallelujah. I should not look back longingly to my, why? Why is it so bad today and it was so good back then? It ain't as good as you're making out it was. And today ain't as bad as you're making out it is. And tomorrow God has a plan. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. If we'll quit this stuff, we'll find out. We'll be enlightened and we'll be led into the next parts of his glorious plan. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look in John here. We I said there's two, two sources of input about the future. The enemy is continually trying to, to paint a picture of an awful future. 
to get you afraid of it. Oh man, everything, everybody's, you know, leaving God and, and every, everything's just, people say, going to hell in a handbasket. Is everything, <laughs> where in the world did that come from, man? That ain't no scripture. No, nobody cares about God. Nobody cares about, that's a lie. That's a lie. Do you remember that uh, uh, Elijah was convinced at one point that he was the last believer on the planet? Is that right? He said, he said nobody else serving God but me. And the Lord said, boy, <laughs> I got 7,000 people right here in this area that's never bowed the knee to these false gods. I, I think he was shocked. I think Elijah was shocked. He thought he's only, well, where did that idea come from? You're the only one trying to portray, there ain't no future. The devil has taken everything over and it's just, it's just doom and gloom and pain and strain from here on out. It's a lie. I said, it's a lie. The truth is the spirit of God and the body of Christ is putting the hurt on the devil in our generation. There are the largest churches in the earth that have ever existed. Yes. Never have there been churches like this. I mean, there are churches of 100,000, 300,000, 500,000, churches of a million people boldly preaching and teaching. It's on the airways all over the world. It's on the internet all over the world. The devil's getting hurt. He's getting hurt bad. He's losing people. He's losing people by the millions that are coming into faith and believing. Oh no, there's still junk going on. You know that. But why focus on that? Why let him feed you his version of a destroyed future? Somebody else wants to talk to you about the future. Choose to listen to him. In John, Thank you, Lord. John, what is it, the 16th chapter? John 16 and verse 13. When the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. Everything he tells you is the absolute truth. He'll not speak of himself, but whatever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. The Holy Spirit inside you wants to give you glimpses of glory. Oh, somebody say glimpses of glory. Of what? Future glory. Glimpses of glory in the future. Glimpses of God's glorious plan for you in this life and taking you into the next. God's got a plan. Oh, what a plan, what a plan. And you're a part of that plan. And it's a good plan. Oh, somebody say good plan. It's a good plan. It's a great plan. In Jeremiah, he prophesied about it. Jeremiah, anybody know what I'm talking about? Jeremiah 29, 11. If you don't know this, you ought to mark it. You ought to get, get, get a hold of it. Jeremiah 29, 11. The Lord said, I know. Does he know? Yes. We don't know about tomorrow, but he knows. He said, I know the thoughts I think towards you, said the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. He said, then you're going to call upon me. You're going to go and pray to me. And I'll hearken to you and you'll seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. It's already been prophesied by the Lord himself that we find him. We find his plan. That's what this is talking about. Listen to the NIV of verse 11. The NIV. He said, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you. And not to harm you. Well, then somebody's preaching is off then. 
Is that right? If they're saying part of the plan of God for us is to be in the midst of all this judgment and destruction in the future and experience all this harm and damage. No, according to the Lord, his plans for us are plans to prosper us. Oh, do you like that word? Prosper us, not to harm us. Plans to give us hope and a future, a good future. The Holy Spirit wants to talk to us about this. He wants to quicken us, give us glimpses of this, show us things to come. Man, when we know the truth, we're stirred up about tomorrow. We're stirred up about the future. We're stirred up about finishing our life and blasting into the next. (laughs) We're not singing the blues about yesterday. (laughs) We're not clinging to the past. We're coming into tomorrow. We're moving into the glorious plan that God has prepared for us before the foundation of the world. Oh, somebody say, praise you, Lord. The complete English version says, I'll bless you with a future filled with hope, a future of success, not of suffering. So these folks preaching about God's plan being suffering for us, they must not have read this verse. They must not have caught this. His future, his plan for us is filled with hope. A future, said out loud, God has planned for me. A future of success, not of suffering. Not of suffering. The Good News Translation and the English, today's English version, both of them say the same thing. Good News Translation, I alone know the plans I have for you. So why would we be listening to anything the devil comes up with? He don't know the plans God has for us. Huh? We're not interested in his plans. We're missing his plan completely. We're missing the devil's plan completely. I'm not, I'm not going with that plan. I've made my choice. I'm going with his plan. And he's the only one who knows that plan. I can't get that from men that think they're smart. Certainly can't get it from the enemy. I can't come up with it on my own. I got to get it from him. But his plan are plans to bring us prosperity, not disaster. Plans to bring about the future you hope for. Oh, somebody say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If you believe these things, you don't worry about tomorrow. You don't sorrow like those who have no hope. You rejoice today. You know, I I do this myself. You know, there's a lot going on in the churches, in the ministry, in the world. And when I catch myself and I got half a day and there ain't no problems and nothing to deal with right now, I shout. (laughs) I enjoy myself. Couldn't you understand what I'm talking about? I I, I'm, not, I'm not waiting for the other shoe to drop. I'm not going, oh, you watch, it'll be something, it'll be something. Somebody will call, something will happen. It'll be, that's being no fun. It's raining on everybody's parade. Stop it. Enjoy. Today is the day of salvation. Now is God's accepted time. And he's cranking up the light as I move forward. Come on, is that right? I mean, we're we're better equipped to overcome issues quickly and decisively than we ever were in times past. We're growing. We're developing. Just because it took you a long time to deal with that thing back three years ago, that's because you were not developed as much as you should be. More of a baby. Now, you'll just slap that thing silly. Put it where it's supposed to be in a fraction of the time. Keep it moving, right? And then celebrate the good things of the Lord and be excited about the days to come and the entire eternity to come. Stand on your feet, everybody. Thank you, Father. 
thank you, Father. Let's lift our hands. Let's worship the Lord. Let's give Him glory. Let's give Him praise. Tell Him you believe. He has a good plan for you. Tell Him. Lord, I believe it. I, I, I believe in this good plan. I believe in this wonderful, glorious plan. Hallelujah. Go ahead, lift your hands. Lift your voices. Tell Him out loud. Say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.